I mean, Ohio and the AMA Vintage Motorcycle Days. Just bought a bike in the swampy, and now I'm going racing. <laughs> Dave Roper here, legend. There are all types of races here at VMD. Hair scrambles, motocross, trials, road racing, and flat track competitions go on during this three day event. So any bike that fits that criteria will do. Oh yeah, and I've got 1500 bucks to spend, not a penny more, and that includes the bike, any parts it needs, entry fees, and gas. Is it a runner? No. No, hard. What do you think? Can I get her ready to race? My dad would be super happy if he could see me now. This is a British motorcycle, a BSA. Does it start? <laughs> oh, we have action. It did when I was last time I raced it, so it probably needs a car, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I have to first fall in for that BSA. The fact that it didn't start then put me off. I don't have much time to prep a bike, so a non-runner at this point in time is a non-starter. There's lots of bikes here. The difficulty is finding one that runs and for the right price. The good ones are definitely too expensive, so keep looking. I pretty much learned to ride a motorcycle like this when I was a kid, a Yamaha TY250. I had an 80 and then later on a 250. This is the 250. Perfect. Real robust, great bike. At last, some bikes in my budget range. Let's see if some of these run. This 70s Spanish Bull Taco was all original, within budget, and started. Do we do it? Do we not? Sell it on Sunday? Yeah, the whole idea is buy it, race it, sell it. What, what, what if I read it to you? <laughs> Let me have a quick think about it. But I couldn't decide on the spot, so I continued the search. I may regret this one. I'm getting nervous. They're not so easy right now. There's lots of bikes here, but I have to find one quickly. Things are going, people are buying. I'm walking past bikes, I'm probably gonna regret it. But anyway, we're gonna keep looking, see what we can find. It soon became a maze with these hundreds of vendors, where I tried to backtrack and see if I could find some of those bikes that previously caught my eye. I'm looking for a bike to race tomorrow. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's always a good sign. Crazy. All right, give me a few minutes to have a think about it and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah for sure. All right, thank you, buddy. This 1978 KTM 250 was a bit of a budget, but it did also come with a bunch of new parts, so I thought it was worth seeing if it would start.
better than the front. Go clear up to the front of you guys. The ride was okay, but it did have issues, mainly the brakes. But let's see if we can talk this man down on price. You haven't got any new rear shoes, have you? Just the front? No, both. Both? Yeah. I can see you've done quite a bit of work on it. This should be uh, pretty reliable, right? Yeah. Should get me through the weekend, I hope. Yeah, it, it would. I, I wouldn't be afraid to ride it. Of course, I'd have to change the brakes. You know? If it's just a case of changing shoes, I'm okay to do that. Yeah, you shouldn't have any problem doing that. You want to take 13? Actually, I'll tell you what, that's my low. Okay. And I'll take it. Okay. All right, let's do a deal then. Sale! We got a sale! <laughs> and I got a new bike. All right, cheers. First part of the challenge is over. We bought a bike. I paid 1250 bucks for this awesome KTM and now we've got a fixer up for tomorrow's race. I bought this one because it came with some decent tyres, it started up and we've got some spare parts so we can make her a little bit better for tomorrow. But right now we're going to go to the Skid Marks communal garage, work on the bike, get her prepped. The Skid Marks garage is a community workshop based in Cleveland, Ohio. They provide tools, benches, and space to assist you with your motorcycle project. Thankfully, they're here at VMD, so let's get stuck in. Okay, so we've just taken out the rear wheel and we're looking at the brake pads. These are old school brakes. This is brake shoes, not brake discs. Uh, the problem with brake shoes is that usually they get old, rusty, dirty, and then they really don't work very well. The short little bit of riding I've done on this bike, the brakes are terrible. I've actually got no brakes at all, so anyway, luckily this bike came with a few spares. Um, I've got some new brake shoes, so I'm going to fit those and really just get this thing really cleaned up because it's really just seized up. Everything that should be moving freely just isn't right now, so work on that. And just as I was finishing the rear brake, some skilled knowledge and experience walked into the room to assist me. Suddenly, I've got more help. What a good do. So I bought a KTM earlier today. We're working on it for the race. Unbelievable, I've got a bunch of guys helping me out. Skid Max Garage is fantastic, but there just happened to be a KTM engine guru is here working on my bike, so it's a top do. Everything working well, now we're on the front wheel. We've taken out the front pads, but it's not as simple as uh, we'd have hoped. The bearing got stuck, so we've had to take the bearing out. And now we're having trouble getting the new pads to go gel together and fit in. So anyway, we're going to try persevere with the new pads. If not, we'll be putting these old ones back in, but they're pretty knackered. So hopefully we don't do that. Several attempts at putting spaces and bearings in differently paid off when the front brake finally went together with those new shoes. Right, let's get that wheel in and see if these brakes work. Oh, look at that. Way. Thank you, buddy. Right, thank you. The test ride went well, so let's get that bike back on the bench for some final touches. The gas tank could definitely do with something on it, so I left it to Atomic Dice to come up with a design to celebrate this event. His skills went to work, and in no time, that gas tank looked fantastic. That's it, success and the challenge is up. Uh, day one has been complete. We bought a bike, we did some work on it, and we've literally just passed tech inspection. Perfect. All I gotta do now, get ready, wait for tomorrow's race. <laughs> so, day one of day three is complete. 
After tech inspection, it was then time to enjoy the pit bike race. A fun end to a great day. The next morning, all I had to do was check over the machine, mix some two-stroke gas and get ready for practice. Oh, at last, it was now time to check out my purchase as I now got to ride this 78 KTM 250, take a look at the track and see if this vintage time machine is ready to race. But just when things were looking and feeling good, the bike suddenly stopped, which is not good. In a last ditch effort to get the old girl going, I bought a new spark plug and hope for the best. But, will it start? There were loads of different classes and categories at VMD. That's what makes this event so special. Whatever vintage bike you have, you'll find a class. And there's nothing better than two stroke fumes and a grid full of bikes. Lining up on the grid and it's my turn now. Bought yesterday, racing today. Let's see what this vintage KTM and I can do. But the bike stopped at the beginning of the third lap when I was in third and fourth. And uh, what a shame. The bike was going good up until that point, so uh, what fun. I'm going to see if we can get it fixed. Don't know what it is and see if we can get in another race. Probably not, but 
Okay, well, that was superb. <laughs> On further inspection, it looks like the failure is something major. It's likely seized. So unfortunately, having broken the bike, there's not going to be any more races for me this weekend. So there you have it. It's for sale. Easy come, easy go. Bought yesterday, race today. Sell it. We just need one person to like it. And hopefully, we can go home with some money in our pocket. But if not, I've got to speak to the wife again and tell her I've got another motorbike. <laughs> Don't think she'll be too happy with that, but hey. We had fun, it was a great time. After the racing, it was then time for the start line knockout challenge. And when that's over, well, as you can see, there are no stopping bikers who want to ride. when you can't ride for the dark, burn some rubber. So we're here in the woods, it's trials day. There's loads of vintage motorcycles here, going over obstacles, tree roots, you name it. These guys have got some skills. So let's go check out the bikes and the riders. It's so great to see all these vintage trials bikes and riders of all ages. So the rules for trials are basically, you have to try and ride through each marked section without putting a foot down. If you do, you lose points. So. Try and keep your balance and your feet up. And look at this awesome rider. He's still riding and competing despite only having one arm and he still makes it through the section cleanly. Well done buddy, just brilliant. After the low speed trials bikes, it was then over to the road racing course for some high speed action and to check out some of those vintage road racing bikes. Look at this awesome machine, a six cylinder 1979 Honda CBX. What a bike! Look at the muscle, look at the size of that engine, incredible. Doing it old school. Now this is a good looking motorcycle. This is a 1986 GSXR 750. Absolutely beautiful. This is one of the first superbikes of its generation really. From there is the modern superbikes that you see today. This is where it started from. Full fairing, sports suspension, a nice tight, slim machine and lots of power.
we have the Matchless G50. Now this bike was ultra competitive in its day. Absolutely gorgeous looking. Single cylinder, 500cc. Love this bike. Now look at this, a Kawasaki GPZ 1100. Gorgeous. Now big powerful engine, sporty suspension, and they made these into race bikes. This one is for sale, and for five grand, this championship winning machine could be yours. So here we have a sidecar. An extra wheel has been put on to take an extra person. And these bikes are absolutely crazy. The guy who's riding this bike has actually built this machine from the ground up. He builds special chassis for sidecars. And inside he's got a 650 Yamaha engine. The engine was built in 71, but they also continued that engine to 81. So there's a whole jumble of different parts in there. It used to have around about 50 horsepower initially. Now it's got over 80 horsepower. Dave Roper here, legend. First American ever to win an Isle of Man TT. He used to own the EX500 that I rode across America that I bought in New York for $200. So Dave, can you tell me a little bit about what your exploits were on that motorcycle? Okay, so my friend Bill Burke told me it was available. I yeah. think I think I bought it for $100. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but it, uh, I think it had a problem with the starter clutch. Okay. And so I had to put some parts into it. Yeah. And I rode it for thousands of miles. Yeah. And then I sold it to my friend Lawrence, probably for $200. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then. Uh, Lawrence at one time was partners with Eric Green at Bar Matchless. Yeah. And so I think it was, you met Eric. Yes, that's and right. And then Eric put you on to Lawrence. That's right. And you bought the bike. Yeah, exactly, right. yeah. And you told me about a story of, because um, the bike's got a black tank and a, 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 a white fairing. You told me that you crashed it on the, on the in New I, York. Yes. I, and that was the reason. Well, I crashed it many times. <laughs> Maybe the most memorable time was <laughs> I was I was uh, riding home from work yeah. in the middle of the winter yeah. and um, and it was right around 32 degrees and I'm on the Long Island Expressway riding along at 70 miles an hour and all of a sudden I'm down oh. and, and I slide forever you know on the black ice and um, luckily I was in the right lane and you know no everybody maintained it. So I got up and I ran about a quarter mile to, to where the bike was. <laughs> and uh, it had broken uh, the headlight lens uh -huh. and it broken off the brake lever. Okay. And um, I picked it up and tried to start it. And it started and the oil light was on for a while, but then it went out. And, <laughs> and so I figured I'll just creep along the shoulder here because it was a long push back to my house. Yeah, know? yeah. So, uh, but it seemed to be going all right. And so, so I got back on the highway and carried on. And then, what the hell? I stopped at the grocery store and picked up some groceries on the way. What's the big deal, man? You know? Our motorbikes are so much fun anyway, but it's so, it's so great to hear tales. I mean, that bike that I picked up in, um, in New York, it's surprising the, the, the history that it has. I mean, it's just an EX500, right. you know, but it's got you quite some You can't beat him to death with a sledgehammer, though. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be a while ago now, isn't yeah. it? You know, when you, when I you bought, bought it, it? Yeah, I bought it in 2008. Yeah. And did my first trip across there, and then I did some other trips on it, but yeah. it, was, it, it was always entertaining, because something always happened, you know? So it was always good fun. But I think, when I sold it to Lawrence, it had a bolt in the rear tire. Yeah, he sold it to me still with it and in. It still had a bolt in it in. And it finally came yeah. out when you were riding it, across the it, country. It flew out in Albuquerque, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I got it plugged at this in the middle of nowhere, this right. garage. After riding it for many miles on a flat tire, Yeah, right? yeah, many miles, yeah. yeah. Like about 2,000, really. <laughs> and then uh, the guy said to me, okay, I'm gonna put the plug in the tire. Right. Make sure you stop at the next uh, motorcycle store and buy right. a tire. He right. said, 
don't go any further on this thing. And as soon as I got on it, I was like, wow, it's so much better than I'd, I'd been using. So I rode it all the way home. So yeah, we did the whole trip on that old tire. So yeah, thanks for putting the bolt in anyway. Right. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, thank you, Dave. After having a great catch up with Dave, he then jumped on his 1970 Air Mackie Harley Davidson 350 Sprint and lined up on the grid. Now we're going to get a chance to ride around Mid Ohio Raceway aboard this historic machine and in the skilled hands of Dave Roper. What a great track, bike and rider. And as more road racers went on throughout the afternoon, it brought an end to this fantastic event. I didn't sell my broken vintage KTM motocross bike, so it looks like I'm going to be adding that to my collection. So that's it for VMD 2017, and this event has been amazing. The swan meet, fantastic. Just about every bike you could possibly imagine is there. The motocross, the trials, the flat track, the road racing, you name it, this event has it. From the grassroots coming right up, this is an event for the enthusiasts. If you like what you've seen, be here next year, because I sure will be. Top event, great stuff.